Okay, so quick review and kind of just going over this quiz. I'm just going to answer the questions and essentially just take it with you and narrate that. Um, the first question is a, about a steady state circuit. It's essentially asking for the definition of a steady state circuit. And if you look at the notes that I had given you probably sometime last week, at the beginning of last week when we defined a steady state circuit, a steady state circuit is one where the pressure in each wire remains constant throughout um, the, re the rest of the circuit. If I, if I were to say that a steady state circuit is one where the pressure in each wire is the same, then what I'm saying is that if I have a red pressure in one wire, there's also a red pressure in another wire and in the other wires and in all of those wires. If the pressure is the same in every single wire, then there is no charge flow. So we are going to say remains constant to say that, you know, if I have a red pressure in one wire, it's always going to be red. If I do say something that you think is confusing or um, you don't like it and you have a question, feel free to just unmute your microphone and say, hey, Mr. Doodley, I have a question. Okay, feel free to do that. Okay, question two. Um, a steady state circuit is one where the flow rate has to be the same in and out of each wire. Um, remember, we, we kind of were talking about this transient process as well. And the transient is this phase where the flow rate in and out of each wire is not necessarily the same. And if the flow rate is not the same, if there's more coming in and less going out, then that's going to make it so that the pressure in that wire would be changing. It would be rising if there's more charge coming in than is going out. But if we have the same pressure, if it's remaining constant, then that means that the amount of pressure that is coming into the wire has to be the same as the amount of pressure that's coming out of the wire. Okay, question number three is about the purpose of a battery. A lot of students said that the purpose of the battery is to maintain a constant flow rate of charge. And if that was the case, then every single circuit that we look at would always have the same flow rate. But that's not what we see. Okay, the purpose of the battery is to maintain this constant red to blue pressure difference. Um, and as we've continued with learning the last couple of days, um, we're starting to see that, you know, while that is the purpose of the battery, it doesn't necessarily always do that perfectly. But the purpose of the battery is to maintain a constant pressure difference, not to maintain a constant flow rate. Okay, question number four, during the transient process, the flow rate might be different in each resistor, and it does change throughout that transient process. The goal of this transient is to um, make it so that eventually the circuit will have the same flow rate everywhere, and that's when it reaches steady state. So during this transient, we haven't gotten to a steady state yet, so the flow rate is changing and the pressure is changing, and that's why the flow rate will also be different for each resistor, potentially. It doesn't have to be, but a lot of the times we do see that, especially in that circuit that we looked at with Castle Unit 5, Activity 1, that was the case. Uh, Mr. D, I have a question. Okay. So uh, the flow rate, when it, uh, when it changes, does, so the pressure difference is like still different, even if the flow rates are all the same in the wiring? So they're all still different colors. Say that one more time for me. So the pressure difference is still the same, or the pressure difference is all still different in each wire, even if the flow rate is the same? It could be. It, it does depend exactly on the specific circuit. Um, if you'd like, once we finish this, I can pull up a new screen and give you a couple of different examples. Um, but it does depend. So like in the circuit that we had mixed bulbs, a long bulb and a round bulb, 
the pressure difference is different for each bowl, but the flow rate is the same um, it, right. once it's reached steady state. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, no, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Question number five is one that a lot of people did miss. Um, there, there were only a couple that I did give full points on this question. It is kind of a... Well, it's it's one that I know that I did talk about a lot in the videos in the last you know week, so we'll we'll go for it. We're trying to describe how and why the pressure in the top right wire, that's this wire right here, is going from yellow to orange. When we first plug it in, since that wire is not the one that's connected to the battery, it doesn't just immediately change, right? We have this transient phase which is a process that does take some amount of time for that wire's pressure to increase. And it's going to increase when it has more charge in it than normal. It's only going to get more charge than normal um, if there's more charge coming into the wire than is going out of the wire. So the wire shifts from yellow to orange because there is more charge going into the wire than is coming out of the wire. That is the flow rate through the first bulb is more than the flow rate through the second bulb. That's because the pressure difference across the first bulb at the very beginning is going from red on that first wire to yellow on the second wire. But the pressure across the second bulb is yellow to yellow at the beginning. That is, there is no pressure difference at the beginning, and so that's why there's not any charge at the very beginning flowing out of that wire and through that bulb, right? On activity one, when we did that activity before spring break, unfortunately, that was like two weeks ago now, we, we saw that these two bulbs on the outside, bulbs one and four, they lit very bright at first, and then these other two bulbs in the middle, bulbs two and three, did not light at first because there was no pressure difference from this top right wire to the middle wire, but there was a pressure difference from the first wire to the second wire. I'm going to continue unless anybody has a question. Okay. Okay, this was matching and um, I tried to fix it, but Apparently, I didn't save the changes, and that's why everybody still saw um, seven different things here, and two of the blanks didn't have anything to match. Um, I did go through and I fixed the grading scale on that, so you did get the correct amount of points. But once this circuit has a steady state, we know that wire one is going to be red because that's the one connected to the positive side and wire 5 is going to be blue because that's the one connected down at the bottom. If we want each of these four bulbs to have the same pressure difference so that they can have the same flow rate everywhere, remember steady state means that the flow rate through each of these is going to be the same. If we want that to be in its steady state, then the difference in pressure from, each, from one wire to the next wire has to be one step. For each, for each one. So that means wire 2 is going to be orange, wire 3 will be yellow, and wire 4 will have to be green. Any questions there? Okay. The very last question then, this is one that a lot of people were able to, to describe correctly. So we have this loose wire right here, wire B, 
that we're going to connect so that we close the circuit. Before we close that circuit, there's obviously not going to be any charge movement because we have an open loop. Remember, charge cannot flow through an open loop. It can only flow through an unbroken loop of conductors. So we have to have a closed path. Once we close that path, the round bulb is going to light. And it'll be pretty bright. The long bulb does not light. At least not yet. Okay, we see no pressure difference across the long bulb and a large pressure difference across the round bulb. Now, as time goes on and this capacitor here begins to fill up with some pressure from here and get some charge taken away from the bottom plate of the capacitor, as that starts to happen, the round bulb gets dimmer until it goes out. Meanwhile, the long bulb gets brighter. And that is essentially because um, at the very, very beginning, the round bulb, because it has less resistance than the long bulb, it does actually let some charge move through it a little bit sooner and at a greater rate than the long bulb does at the very beginning. But then as the charge starts to move out of wire B and into wire C, the pressure difference across that round bulb is changing. But since the long bulb is not letting as much charge through, the pressure difference, well, I guess the pressure difference is also changing. Um, but the long bulb is designed so that even with less pressure, with less charge flow, it is going to still light. And so essentially we have, you know, these two A and B had the same pressure at the beginning, um, or at least close to the same pressure at the beginning. But as charge moves out of wire B and into wire C at a greater rate than it's moving into wire B from wire A, the pressure in B is going to drop lower and lower and lower until it's pretty close to the same as the pressure in wire C, which is why that round bulb doesn't light. There is still charge flow through the round bulb at the end, um, but it doesn't light because it's not enough charge flow to make it light. It kind of requires a minimum amount of charge flow in order to stay lit.